<laughs> so today's session was hour and 20 minutes, hour and a half, something like this. After a night shift, no food in the belly for many, many hours, probably pushing like 16 hours. Um, straight in here. And so the session was hour, hour and a half. Uh, and basically, the majority of that session was spent with core. Um, as you see there, I'm, oh, I did side planks. Um, I spent quite a bit of time doing side planks. So I did 10 sets of 30 seconds each side. So 10 sets of that. Uh, and then I, uh, after that, I moved into front squats, back squats, and then I came back and I did some more sit-ups. So I th actually, I think the, the session was about, you know, hour, hour and 15. So the majority of my session was spent doing core, uh, thinking about core, thinking about the exercises that I, you know, I should do. Uh, the, the whole point of today's uh, uh, session was obliques. Um, so many conversations with you guys in the comments last few days. Um, you know, I read Greg Knuckles' article, uh, I, I actually went back to the book um, by Vukashansky and, and uh, the Russian author that kind of is basically the grandfather of, of literature in the sports kind of periodization world. Um, he, he calls the, the, the internal, the external obliques critical for creating intra-abdominal pressure. And we know that intra-abdominal pressure is basically, you know, a requirement for strength. You can't brace without creating intra-abdominal pressure. That's what bracing is. And so, you know, he said that external and internal obliques are basically the, the gatekeepers to that. You know, it's, it's, it's how you create pressure. Um, so I kind of last night, I've been talking to you guys, reading all this stuff, thinking about it. And I thought, okay, everyone seems to be talking about side planks as, you know, the go-to thing. So I dedicated basically, you know, a whole bunch of time today uh, doing side planks. Uh, I did 10 sets. That's probably too much for the first day. But the reason why I did that is I wanted to feel the doms the following day. I want to see exactly which muscles were working. And that's kind of like a, a technique I like to use once in a while is, you know, introduce an exercise, hit it hard, and then really feel what muscles worked during the exercise the following day, day and a half, or two days, when doms kind of settles in. You kind of know what the exercise is doing because you've got that feedback. Um, I've said this in the past, you don't need doms to indicate an effective workout. That doesn't need to be the case. I mean, I haven't had... Uh, doms for a while um, you do that you shouldn't just rely on on doms as an indicator of effective workout um, so it was interesting interesting like you know this this thing was uh, I was feeling the shoulder number one the shoulder was uh, working the lats were working to kind of stabilize the shoulder uh, obviously I was feeling the whole side of me um, the obliques the whole side I was actually feeling what I think is the QL on my on my lower back I was feeling that thing work and I was feeling the the, the adductors. So basically, the forces acting upon the body in the side plank is everything on the side of you. Everything that's kind of, um, you know, resisting force from the side. So it was an interesting, uh, you know, exercise because usually what I'm doing is, you know, uh, bilateral exercises. Most of the time I'm doing squats and deadlifts um, and then I'm doing, you know, bench press. So I'm never really challenging myself from that kind of side. This is kind of like somebody's pushing you from the side, essentially. Um, which is interesting, um, interesting thing because now we know that it translates to creating intra-abdominal pressure. So if you can have really developed obliques, internal external obliques, you'll be able to brace better and you'll be able to do those bilateral exercises a bit better. Um, so really interesting. And so when I, when I went into front squats, um, basically my squatting routine was like 20 minutes, man. It, it, was, it was really quick. I did the bar for 20 front squats, then I did 60 for 10, kilo, uh, for 10 reps. And then I did 120 for one, and then I transferred over to back squats, and I took that to 180 times one. That was basically the whole workout in, 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 uh, in the squats, and it took me very, very quickly, a uh, uh, little time to do this. Um, what I found was I was so certain of my lower back. I was so insulated. That's the term that kind of came up into my, my mind. I was so insulated, um, kind of protected in my kind of trunk region after doing these side planks. So when I went into the squats, I just felt whatever it is, it's not going to be my core failing me right now. The mind-muscle connection to that trunk, to the core, was 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 amazing. Like it was it was a really confidence-inspiring uh, sensation to go into squats um, after doing these side planks. So this is something that Greg Knuckles talked about in this article that one of you guys actually recommended to me that I read. Um, he spoke about the role of obliques. The role of you know uh, uh, obliques when it comes to 
uh, squats and deadlifts and why, in his opinion, two-thirds of people that, that have kind of tried this, doing side planks before these compound movements, have had better success. Um, it's because you just kind of activate the core, it fires up, and it's almost like easier to, to, to brace because there is kind of like this mini pump happening in the core and you are aware, there's like sensory feedback you know, when you've just before you go down or up, depends on what what exercise you're doing, you feel what the muscles are doing. Whereas if you don't warm up and you don't have the mind muscle connection, you kind of take that deep breath, you clench down, but you don't really feel muscle contractions. Well, you do side planks and you're going to feel muscle contractions. Um, now the trick obviously is like if you're going to a competition, you know, do you do side planks before your you know your you know lifts? You can do a little bit, but you don't want to be too much, to, so you fatigue the, the the oblique. So it's kind of like that fine balance. Um, for me, obviously, I don't really care about what the top number is. I just care about the training stimulus, um, and so that's why I did ten sets. Uh, so definitely, I'm keeping this in the mix. Um, so right now, I've basically, you know, there's a there's a whole gang of exercises that I that I think are, are worth my time. Um, I still believe in the sit-ups. Um, I now believe in weighing, you know, putting weight into that exercise, so doing weighted sit-ups. I believe in the psoas. I believe in the seated psoas curl is what I'm calling it. Maybe there's a proper term for it. Um, and now side plank. Um, the side planks is, is doing something that those other exercises aren't. Um, now, you can swap these out for whatever you want. You know, if you, if you don't like sit-ups, you can do leg, curl, uh, leg raises. Um, if, you don't, if you don't like doing the seated psoas exercise, you can do what the knees over toes guy does with the monkey feet, as I've been told is called, that, that little device that you hook up weights. You can do that. Uh, if you don't like side planks, maybe you, you could do suitcase carries, you know, kettlebell carries, overhead carries, some sort of unilateral kind of carry. Um, so there's, you know, these things are interchangeable. It's just what suits you. You know, what, you know, how do you like to do it? The reason why I selected the side plank instead of the suitcase is because well, I don't want to take the weights outside. It's cold. It's wet. You know. So, um, and you know, with with suitcase carries, I guess there's a component of, you know, your grip. You know, your grip is is becomes a component. Um, so just like the knees over toes, um, knee raise versus that thing that I showed you yesterday with the psoas, the seated psoas thing. You know, one isolates the psoas a bit better than the other. You know, the standing knee raise with the monkey feet. That, that calls more muscles in, into it. You know, your rectus femoris, your adductors, you know, because you're going not just above 90 degrees hip flexion, you're going from zero degrees all the way to 90 and beyond. So it just depends how you want to attack it. It depends what you want to do. Um, it's really interesting to me. You know, I, I think there's a lot of things we can take from other disciplines in sports. You know, you know Jack, the fellow that introduced me to the, the seated psoas variation of, you know, the knee raise, you know, he's from a background of sprinting, sprint training, right? Um, so, you know, sprinters spend a lot of time working on their psoas, a lot of time. If you think about it, it's it's the number one component of sprinting, right? You need to be able to throw your knee forward and then dig dig out of it with a posterior chain. Um, so it's really, really interesting. You can, you can take bits and pieces from different disciplines um, and, you know, take what you need and then apply it to your discipline. Um, I think, you know, I just, I keep thinking to myself, like my, exercise, my, my, my training sessions are now looking freaking like a, like I'm an MMA fighter or something, or like a gymnast, spending the majority of my time with core. Um, but something is telling me this is the right path forward. Something is telling me that I'm losing way too much power through my midsection. You know, I've got this, I've got this leg power, I've got this fat engine, you know, I just can't put it to the floor. The, the, you know, something is happening. I'm losing too much power in the drivetrain. I'm losing too much power with the tires. My differential is off. I just can't stick that power down. So what if you, you know, reinforce the whole drivetrain and get fat ass tires and a really good diff, all of a sudden you're putting that power down and you're getting propulsion. You're going quicker. Um, yes, you can keep adding power into the engine. You can put turbo, supercharges, all this sort of stuff. Keep beefing up the engine. Is that really, is that a good productive time? Are you, are you, is that the best way you can spend your time to get quicker down the the four you know uh, uh, the quarter mile, the 400 meters? Um, so that's kind of an analogy for for all you car guys, but that's what I'm thinking right now. Let's just reinforce, 
you know, the midsection, uh, let's just make sure every little ounce of power that we create, we put into the bar and we can lift the weight. Um, this is a really intellectual, uh, stimulating thought to me. Imagine if I can put on 10, 20 kilos um, of, of, you know, squatting power because I've just made my midsection like iron. Uh, that would be a really, really cool thing. That would be a really cool experiment to try and I'm in the midst of it right now. So obviously you, you still need to squat. You still need to have specificity. You still need to practice the sport. Um, so that's what I'm kind of doing. I'm not going to be pushing your pig squats and all that stuff in the next few weeks because I, I, I basically, as I said to you, I'm coming out of sickness. Um, you know, the kids are bringing back all sorts of things home, viruses from, from kindy. Uh, so it's, it's challenging me that way. So I don't want to spend you know, busting my balls with, you know, big squat routines when it's this cold and whatever, you know, we're coming into a winter season, I'm working in ED, so there's a lot of chance of getting sick. Whereas this core work, I feel like I could do this three times a day. It just feels like light, light work. It doesn't feel taxing like it is when you're smashing the quads, the hemis, the glutes, the erectors, like all those big, big, big muscles. Um, so I'm going to try and just keep relevant with squats and just really hammer the, the, the core and see where it takes me um really really interested to see how this is going to work all right guys that's all i got for you today i'll catch you guys tomorrow peace out